As night falls on a deserted country lane, an illegal waste contractor arrives to fly tip his latest load. Tipping and illegal waste disposal can be a serious hazard to health and the environment. Everything from building rubble to bags of clinical waste gets tipped in hedges, fields, on the roadside and even on the street. At any one time it's estimated that there may be several hundred illegal waste disposal sites operating across the UK. There are controls over every part of the waste management chain, from production to final disposal or export. All those involved in this activity are legally responsible for the waste, including its safe storage, handling and carriage. These are the main players along the waste chain. A waste producer or the waste importer, a waste carrier and ultimately a waste manager who recycles, reprocesses, incinerates, landfills or disposes of the waste in some other way. In practice, there may be more players involved than this if the waste is processed and reprocessed several times. Or fewer if waste producers carry their own waste to a waste manager or disposes of it themselves. But we'll just add two more players, a dealer and a broker. There is a requirement to apply what's known as the waste hierarchy when transferring waste and this must be confirmed on the waste transfer note. The waste hierarchy is a basic set of principles or options for reducing the environmental impact of waste and improving resource efficiency. Beginning with the most favourable option which is prevention or avoiding the production of waste in the first place, through to the final disposal of the waste, which is the least favourable option. Initially, we need to think about not producing waste in the first place, by not putting in the process or business what we don't need. An example of prevention might be the bulk ordering of product in IBCs instead of drums, Preparing the waste for reuse can also save money. Equipment or materials may be reused within the business, sold for use in other operations, or given to a charity. Next comes recycling. Organic waste can be composted in glass, cardboard, paper, plastic and wood can all be recycled. Before you can decide on how to dispose of your waste, you need to know its composition, if it could prove hazardous to health or the environment, and if it needs special handling or treatment. So, you've selected a waste carrier, but before handing over the waste, you have to consider how it is to be contained for transportation. The container should be adequate for the type and quantity of the waste to be carried. For example, sludges should be contained so they won't spill out onto the highway. All skips should be sheeted or netted to prevent debris blowing out during transport. Landfill sites come under particularly strict controls. The waste will be inspected and if anything unusual is seen, the load may be removed, quarantined and returned to the producer. The waste will be checked on arrival at the reprocessing or disposal site. So, from a producer's point of view, it is not out of sight, out of mind, once the skip has left the factory gate. If the waste does not fit the description, the discrepancy will probably be found further down the line. 